Thank you, Kambala. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning, everyone. Julian Morris, Channel 5 News. I know you all have given us a tall order here. There's a lot of information to wrap your mind around. A lot of speakers, lots of information. However, um, one of the more pressing things for me, and I think for, for the people in the Lubia area, would be the situation they are facing right now. And according to the minister, he said that he found out, they found out a few weeks after Maria, they were informed about the ammonia. Uh, he said that they were assured at the time that it would be safe in containers. He said subsequently, a week ago, uh, they reported small leaks and so on. What my concern is, and probably would be the concern for the people in the area, is what, do, did we at any point know prior to that that we, we had a, a potential problem there? I also, we've learned from today's press briefing that there are other chemicals there as well. Is there a protocol in place for companies such as this one to dispose of these chemicals in a safe way? Is there something in place? And who is monitoring it? Is environmental health monitoring? Um, do we know if these companies are adhering to whatever protocol there might be? So this is where my, my concern is for environmental health. Um, I don't know if Miss Miss Carbon can address Hi. that or uh, yes. Sure. Please go to the podium. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, when it comes to the urgency of the situation, um, maybe about um, four to five weeks ago, we knew that um, there were chemicals at Kubuli. We, as far as we knew, the, con the, the, the chemical was properly stored and they needed to transport the chemical to another location in Belfast. The persons Environmental health knew of the we knew of that about four weeks ago. They came and they said that they would need transportation to transport it to Belfast. However, we said that if we were going to transport, there were logistics and we would definitely have to involve the police and the fire people because environmental health would not have the would not be able to really arrange for transportation or do the necessary monitoring. So it would have to be a team effort. Um, the gentlemen left the island we did not hear from them again until we from our environmental health standpoint we didn't hear from them again until we knew of the emergency situation um the other comp of um to continue the other companies in ireland we have decided to do an assessment of the other areas to ensure that you know to find out what conditions the chemicals that they have on on island is being kept and so that we can give them the necessary advice. In just just to follow up, just mm -hmm. before Jyoti asks this question, um, you you, ha you all have to be commended that there is an effort to perhaps dilute the ammonia. But you said you know it was basically trying to protect humans versus maybe damaging the environment, perhaps. But what happens? Do we should we be warning people who might want to maybe bathe in the sea? Perhaps this is going to be going through the river into the the sea eventually so okay. should we be concerned there should be no, we, 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 we do not have concern or concern there as you know you have maybe have heard the term of dilution dissolution to pollution so we are diluting it to a stage where it's not going to affect the thing is it's an irritant and it would irritate our, our lungs so we would get things like burn blisters through our respiratory system so we would get blisters on our, our respiratory tract and all of that would maybe to our lungs. So that would have been the concern if we have a, a pH of above it, you know, so because at 14, that is what it would cause. So that was the reason why we asked that the pH be brought down to at least it so that we know at it, it would not really affect the, in, um, the population. And we, they wanted to use nine. They wanted to bring it down to nine. But we wanted them to do eight because we were trying to protect the, the organisms in the, in the river. So we would not get any fish kill or any of our, our, our other minute organisms that are in the, in, in, the, in the environment of the river. We saw occasionally I would go through that way since following Maria and I would see people bathing, washing in the river. Did, do we have any concerns about okay. this? Right. The, the, what is happening is contained in the building 
okay, the what was the concern and why we had to really rush into doing it today at short notice is because we had started seeing an increase in the amount of mo ammonia in the air within the facility. Okay, we did not have a, a problem. We have not seen a problem in the environment outside. But in within the building, when the gentlemen came and they realized, because the thing is, it's, even if you have a liquid ammonia, anytime it escapes to the air, it turns into gas. The gas is colorless, so we not see it, but it has a pungent odor. So you would actually smell it. Okay, if it, if it mixes with the, with the, as I said, the acid chemicals that we have there, it can really cause a, a kind of, I should, something almost like an explosion, you know? So, so, so we, we needed to get rid of it. The, the pipelines that it was, it, it, it was used as the refrigerant for the, for the, for the, for the, for the, for the products that you, they, were, they were manufacturing. Because we, we couldn't officially say that we, are, we had a leak because we were not seeing a leak. However, we felt that because um, the ammonia remained so long in the pipeline, it must have affected the valves and so in the pipeline. So we had small leaks because we saw an increase in the amount of ammonia that was being released in the, in the building itself. So that is one of the reasons we could not wait so that it maybe might end up getting out in the atmosphere and affect the communities that was really living close to, to Kubuli. So that is the reason why we had to take this quick measure. What happens to the ammonia, the stuff they take to Belfast? What happens to that? Well, Do you know? we are not taking anything to Belfast. Belfast was... Into no, that was the plan in the beginning. When they came down, they said they were looking at the chemicals they have, and their plan was to transport it to Belfast. However, when they came back, they actually had to deal with that aspect of it. Okay, but you're satisfied with the, 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 these things there? Yes, it? well, we, the, the thing is, the, 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 it's an internationally accepted um, process that you dilute the ammonia, you bring it the pH down, and you try your best to dispose of it. Question is for Mr. Flora, um, I notice a lot of emphasis has been placed on the management and which management and whatever it is and how you go about um, diluting, if, if that is the proper term in this circumstance, to get people to understand that um, they've got to separate their waste. How satisfied are you that the message is getting across and are you seeing the results of those messages I mean people are really taking into putting their um, or the separating their waste and is it is it getting the effect that you really would like to see it get? Um, if I were to answer from, uh, from my own perspective I would say yes I would want everybody to tomorrow um, just separate all the material I mean from me being someone who does the first money that is what I'd like to see but I mean the educational process takes a lot of time and Many times, um, if you notice in Europe and developed countries, um, recycling is not something that is, um, it is mandated by law that you separate your material. And in small island developing states, I mean, despite, I mean, all many challenges with man waste management, um, legislation is something that we need to couple with for any initiative that we are um, implementing. And to be able to see that greater um, participation in terms of separation, we need legislation to support. We cannot just purely leave it on the goodwill of the, of the general public for education to get it on. We should, we, to help us achieve the level of separation that we would have. I mean, we have recycling programs within the Pava State area, the center of my area, we're seeing the general public separating, we're putting it out. I mean, we applaud that. But what we're saying, had we, if we had the legislation in place, it would ensure that you could go to somebody and say there is non-compliance according to the law, you should be able to comply, so, so, and so. Then we we'll, we'll see that greater level of participation um, in terms of putting out the material. Yeah. Dr. Johnson, you spoke of a seven-point plan, is that? Um, seven pillar? No, I have, I have seven. Strong community participation was the seventh one. <clears throat> um, I would like you to speak to, to those um, seven points in more detail for us, please, because um, <laughs> just telling us about it doesn't seem to satisfy us too much. We would like some more detail 
um, as to the seven pillar um, plan that you have or that is being en or is envisaged for the continued um, development, as we say, of the health sector? I thought you had asked my question, I mean, not question already, but that's a, that's a big. Okay, thank you. Um, um, just to summarize, we, this seven blocks or, pla uh, or, or, or pillars, as we indicated there, they, they, they are not n totally new to the health system. They, in fact, there are the seven pillars, um, more so six, uh, seven ones is added, um, um, that, is, that is established by the Pan American Health Organization in terms of um, strengthening a, a, a health system. Um, we are going to conduct assessment. Okay. Whenever you're developing a plan, first thing you need to do is to conduct a, a, an assessment in terms of get all of your facts right and then um, see exactly what are the problems are, what the challenges are, and then develop a work plan. Okay. So service delivery, service, let me just speak to them very quickly because um, service delivery is how we provide the service, the type of service we provide to the population. Okay. All right, both at the primary health care and at the secondary health care level. We need to be able to do better how we provide services and to ensure that, um, that our services continue to run as smoothly as possible during a disaster and after a disaster. So that, that, one, that, that is easy, right? Um, workforce. We need to ensure workforce is, I guess, that one's simple as well. I mean, we have a number of persons providing um, healthcare services and workforce doesn't only entail doctors and nurses. I mean, as I indicated to you, we have to thank everyone from from cleaners to cook to pharmacists to what we call support staff. So a number of persons are in within the Ministry of Health who are providing or ensuring that health services are delivered and delivered properly. We have to ensure that we have the correct numbers, the correct type, in the correct places providing services to the general population. All right? Um, health information system, um, um, for you to be able to do anything, you have to have correct data, correct information. So we have to develop a system that is, that is robust, that captures the information, that stores the information up, up in, a, in, a, in a good and a safe area. So from data, data is transformed to, to, to information, and information is transformed to knowledge. All right, that, 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 that's the process. So we have to ensure that for communicable disease, for non-communicable disease, for anything that affects the health system, um, we have to be able to retrieve it in a, in a very timely and efficient way so as to move forward. Access to essential medicines, um, that, is, that, is, that, is, uh, that speaks for, it, for itself. Um, you, you have heard, um, even before the Maria just at the budget address that um, the, the, the Prime Minister, the policy direction was set out by the government in terms of even making more money is available for, um, for um, ensuring that we have essential, more essential medicines. One such, such med medication uh, or type of medicine, group of medicine would be the cancer t medication based on the, 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 the problems that Dominicans are, fa are faced with. Right, so that's the fourth. Financing. I mean, the minister speak about it. I mean, we are trying to ensure that we have um, a robust healthcare financing for the health sector because health is something that consumes a lot of money. Some people look at it as it's not, it's not a revenue generating, it's a social sector, but at the same time keep people well to produce money in the population. So we have to look at, and the government is looking at how you can strengthen the financing system for health. Uh, you have heard um, prior to her, prior to Maria, the idea of the national, the pilot national insurance scheme, and and, and, and ruling out a more a robust financial system um, for the for, for the Ministry of Health or the, for the health sector, and leadership and governance. I hope that is self-explanatory. Uh, to drive anything, you need you need persons to do it. You need persons to champion it. Uh, governance this is sort of structure that you have, and that would come with legislation as well. The minister speaks, spoke, sorry, with regards to some our legislative agenda. Um, their policies and their legislation to make sure that things happen and things happen properly and, and hold persons accountable, uh, etc. So I hope I did a fair thing in, term, in terms of um, 
explaining what those th six things mean, Mr. Ross? Yes, sir. All right. As we speak of financing and leadership and community uh, and communication, this next question is for P.S. Later. In your presentation, sir, you did make mention that there was loss of over $18 million to the, to the sector, but you would need approximately $60 million to bring it back. Explain that disparity. Okay, to explain, you're talking about the damage and loss. So you're talking about damage to buildings, damage to equipment, etc. Um, we very simply to replace what is damaged, it's going to cost a little more. Um, even for your simple house, you would realize to replace what may be damaged in your house is going to cost you more than actually what what um, because the price of things have gone up. In addition to that, we're not just looking at going back to where we were at Maria, but we're talking about building better, building back better. That is the word that we've been talking about. So if we're talking building back better, and as the minister indicated, building, you know, developing a climate resilient health system, it certainly cannot be the same 18 million that we're talking about. Um, the details of that almost 60 million would be contained in the PDNA. I mean, at this point, I'm not going to go through the details of all the, the cost, but you're looking at things like um, efficient, improved energy systems. We are talking about smarting our healthcare facilities, um, as the minister indicated some of that. So it certainly is not building the roof back as it was, giving you back the same facility as it was. So that explains the increase in costs, my friend. Thank you. You know, sent evacuated for medical care overseas. I just wanted to to you know get some sort of status on on them how they're doing and you know do, do you have any information on 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 that or am i asking the wrong question in the wrong place <laughs> oh, the, 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 th thanks for that question we yeah we have a number of patients and th thanks to the assistance obviously the government of dominica um and also to, to PAHO, which assisted us greatly in evacuating a number of our patients, uh, lifting a number of our patients. Um, some of them have returned home. Um, some of them are doing, um, have done well. We have had, we have had, and um, we have contacted the families um, in instances where, where, where we had um, one or two deaths for some of the fam of persons who, who went overseas. All right, um, so we can account for all of the patients. All right, and we are in collaboration with Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, um, is coordinating and giving us constant status report of those of those of those patients. And if any for unfortunate circumstances arises um, with those patients, we the first thing we do is to contact the families of those patients and to give them an update of those patients uh, to let them know what has happened or what is happening. I hope I have done justice to that question. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This brings to an end the press briefing for today, Friday, November 17. Uh, which focused on health and environment. Um, although he's not there, I will start by um, saying my thanks to the Minister for Health and Environment, Dr. Kenneth Daru, uh, the parliamentary representative for the Pitit-Savan constituency first, uh, the 
Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health and Environment, Mr. Davis Leitan, the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. David Johnson, and the Chief Environmental Health Officer, uh, Ms. Ferdinia Carbon, and the General Manager of the Dominica Solid Waste Management Corporation, Mr. Florian Mitchell. All of these were um, podium speakers, but the other people within the Ministry of Health and Environment whom you did not see this morning who are present here on site, I can let you know, uh, Dr. Laura Esprit, who is the Director of Primary Health Care here in Dominica, the Principal Nursing Officer, Cesarina Farrell, and also uh, Mr. Dexter Francis, who is the Project Manager at the new National Hospital, the single biggest project that Dominica has ongoing at this time. Well, that was previous to Hurricane Maria. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Johnson says it still is 109 million EC dollars uh, in total. And so, ladies and gentlemen of the media, I thank you again for your presence. All those looking and following the proceedings, listening and looking, following the proceedings in general, here and abroad, we thank you also for your participation, one and all. Have a great day.